Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts coming your way. I've got a few sweet friends who are going to be joining me today. It's going to be so fun. I'll explain those details a little bit later. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on five easy DIY farmhouse fall floral crafts. Well, at least I think they're easy. So let's get started with project number one. So for this project, we're going to just start out with this jar I had in my supply, and I've got one of these lids. You can purchase them at Dollar Tree. They also have these that come in a two-pack, but this other one is just a one-pack. This is a full pick by itself from Dollar Tree, and these are just pieces of pieces that came off other picks all from Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do, I what I liked about this lid holder is the star will kind of hold everything in place, so I'm just making sure I can get as much of the floral I want inside that jar you know kind of guesstimating how much I can get in there and then I love that it had a little handle to hang down for some decor so once I'm satisfied that everything fits in that jar I'm going to use some of these rub-ons here again these are from Dollar Tree now these are a little bit weird I have used rub-ons for years with scrapbooking I'm going to use this one part of a quote that says fall in love um but yeah they're just weird I I can't even explain why they're weird they're just weird but I'm going to place this so that it kind of fits that you can see it around you know the little hanger here and then I'm going to use my rub on tool I've taped it down a little bit and get this off onto the jar I actually found it easier I rub a little bit on here to show you but I actually found it easier to kind of lay in my lap and rub it on and I know I'm on glass but it kind of was like it moved around a lot the paper around the rub on most rub ons kind of it's a little bit of a sticky so it kind of holds it in place not sticky sticky but it just has something to help hold it in place now this is actually two of the rub ons I wanted it a little bit darker I rubbed one rub on got the other one rubbed it right over the top I had two packages I wanted it a little bit darker because I'm going to fill the inside here with pine cones and so I want that to kind of show a little bit it's still a little bit subtle but you know it is at least a little bit darker by rubbing one rub on over the other put the pine cones in screw our little you know top on and then I'm just going to start laying everything in that lid through the star down into the pine cones the pine cones hold everything in really nice and you know just arrange it how you like get whatever in there that you like make it work just make it pretty this is such a simple piece easy to do very inexpensive and I like how it turned out so I'm just kind of arranging things how I like and now I have some of this raffia I've tied it into a bow already I'm going to come in and just kind of cut off uh, the ends I like to cut them off separately making some shorter some longer so it's not all even believe it or not because you all know how I like to like measure things and make everything even using my glue gun I'm going to glue that onto the top of the lid and then I've got this wood leaf here from my supply I'm going to use my crocodile to punch a hole in it and I love how this wood leaf has the burnt around it because it kind of matches the colors in my flowers right and I turn to lay my jar down before we put that leaf on and notice you can kind of see like the stick because I use like one of those skewers to put some of the flowers in so I'm just taking some leftover leaves and I'm hot gluing them in front of that stick to camouflage it so you don't see it from the front huh and then I'm going to take a twine bow I just you know twine into a bow and I'm going to hot glue that on front of the raffia and then I've got these loop pins from Tim Holtz so you can find these in the scrapbook section or Walmart has them in their sewing section and they're called bulb pins like light bulbs so either way and you can find them on Amazon as well I'm just going to use one of those to pin my leaf into the center of that bow ensemble and then that makes this project complete Let's move on to project number two. For this project, we're going to make some little cute mini pillows for like bowl fillers, some fall pillows. I've got four different color fabrics here, all from Hobby Lobby. And what I'm going to do is I've just ripped my fabric. They're four and a half inches wide. And then I'm going to turn and rip it into another four and a half inch. So I have four and a half inch squared. You need two pieces per pillow. 
So I hope that makes sense. Rip them into four and a half inch strips and then turn and rip them into four and a half inch again. I'm going to use these two orange ones I've already ripped. I thought it'd be a little bit easier to see on camera. You can use hot glue or Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here. If you do that, you want to glue down three sides, stuff it, and then glue down your fourth side. I want to do a little sewing. You all know I want to do it. I'm going to use some crochet thread here. You can get this from Walmart and yarn darner needles. And I use these because they have a bigger eye hole here to get that crochet string through. So go ahead and thread your needle all the way through and then tie a knot at one end, of course. Now I'm going to start split the fabric apart and I'm going to start from the inside of both pieces of fabric and pull it through that back piece to hide your knot. Then put your two pieces of fabric together. And then from the back side, you're going to come back through close to that knot through both pieces to the front. All right, and we're just going to make little stitches. So what, about a quarter inch apart, I'm going to make it a little stitch from the front to the back, both pieces of fabric together, and pull it all the way through, just like that. Then I'm going to come from the back to the front, about a quarter inch apart, through both pieces of fabric, pull it all the way through. In case we have any beginners, and I'm going to do that again from the front to the back, pull it all the way through, and you're going to continue this process all the way around. All right, now here in a minute, show you a little bit quicker. Three sides, leave one side open. Quicker, you can take your needle and pleat both of those pieces of fabric onto your needle, completely down one side, and then pull your needle all the way through. And now you have a whole side of stitches just like that, nice and easy. Again, three sides, we're gonna leave one side open. So it looks like a little pocket here, right? And then we're gonna stuff that as full as you wanna stuff it with some stuffing. Mm -hmm. We're going to stuff it with some stuffing. And then once you've got that stuffed, we'll go ahead finishing with our stitches and we're going to close this side up. And then I'll show you how I kind of hide the little knot in the end. Just kind of like the beginning, we hide that beginning knot. We hid that beginning knot. We're going to hide the ending knot. I'm going to make my last little stitch here. I'm going to pull those pieces of fabric apart. And I'm going to come through that back layer only, just like we did at the beginning. I'm gonna pull it all the way through and then I'm gonna take my needle and come under that little stitch, under any little stitch will do. I'm gonna pull it through till I come almost to the end and I have a little loop here and then I'm gonna take my needle through that loop once or twice and then pull it all the way close. There's a knot and cut off the end and you're done. Now, the rest I did off camera, so I have five little pillows here and then one I played with and already have a little bow on it. <laughs> I'm gonna use these flowers from Dollar Tree. They were Dollar Tree, oh my gosh, from Hobby Lobby. They were 40% off. They're really cute with the stitching on it. Nice, heavy looking felt here. Nice, vibrant and bright, but I'm going to take that brightness away. I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink here and a little finger dauber sponge. And I'm just going to, you know, rustic this all up with some ink and dirty it up a little bit. And then I've got some leaves off some picks. I'm going to dirty those up a little bit. I've got a little ripped strip of fabric, same thing. And then I'm going to add a little ink to that pillow that I've already kind of got a bow on there. And now I've got some more of that crochet thread make a little knot in one end. And what I wanna do on this first pillow nice and easy is add like a little button. If you're a gluer, you can just glue your button on, okay? But I wanna make that little where the pillow's kind of indented in the center that you see. So really easy, you just come from the back side and pull your needle and thread all the way through. And you have that little knot showing, that's cute. We want that knot to show there. And then I'm gonna pull it through my holes here. If it's a four hole, I like to pull it through two at a time. And then I'm going to come back through from the front to the back of the pillow, right close to that knot. And I'm going to pull it and pull it nice and taut. And now we have kind of that little indent. And then I'm going to come back through again to fill those other two holes. If you have a four hole button, if you have a two hole button, you don't need to do this obviously. And then looks like that when we're done. And then on the back side, I'm just gonna come right close to that original knot and make a little stitch, a loop, pull my thread through a couple of times and cut off the excess. And that's done. That button and that pillow is done. And you can do that on all your pillows if you want, if you just want cute buttons on all of it and you're done. But I thought it'd be cute to make them all a little bit different, right, of course. So this one's going to have a flower, that little strip of fabric, and a button. And we have my sweet, beautiful fur baby, Marley, here. She's checking out, seeing what mom's doing. So she'll be on and off really quick. <laughs> I'm going to pull this thread and needle through this sunflower, just like we did the button, okay? And then I'm going to add the little piece of fabric over the top and then the button on top of that. And I'm going to thread this button all the way through four times because I've got a four-hole button here. I'm going to cross-thread that through. 
and then back through that little fabric and that flower back through the back of the button it's probably easier to watch and pull it all the way through and then pull it nice and taut so you get that little indent and then i'm going to knot it off in the back cut off the excess and that one's done this pillow again i'm bringing it from the back to the front want to make that little indent I'm gonna thread my little flower through it. Sometimes I had to use the pliers because it was just really thick flour to pull it through. I'm just making kind of a little stitch there on the flower, pulling it through to the back side. I'll straighten my little flower up here. I'm gonna go ahead and knot that off in the back, just like we've been doing. Cut off that excess, and then I'm gonna just glue a cute little leaf behind it. And then I've got a little twine bow I made in one of those bulb pins, and I'm just going to pin that to the center of the flower. And this one is done. Going to do the same thing on this next one. Again, I'm kind of just putting this flower on just as if I was adding a button, right? And adding that little indent in the back. Going to go ahead and knot it off here. Making my little loop, loop, my loop, my loop and pulling my thread through, cutting off the excess, making a little knot. Adding a big leaf here on this one. And then I have this little scrapbooking button. It's got a number seven on it and a bulb pin, and I'm pinning that to the center of the flower just for some fun. And that makes this project complete. So today's video, I'm joining in with host Emily, who is Farm Charm Chic, and Missy, who is Crafty Cove DIY, here on YouTube, and we are bringing you the 5 Under 5 DIY Challenge. Now, basically what this is, is we have to create five projects, and this month's theme is Fall Florals, and each project has to be $5 and under, okay? And of course, it comes at the 5th of every single month. I will have a link to the playlist down below because there's going to be tons of other people who join in on this DIY challenge as well. You're going to get lots of inspiration for the five for five DIY fall floral challenge this month. So make sure you go take a look at that. Thank you, Missy and Emily for having me co-host with you. Let's move on to project number three. So for this project, I have two circles. One is four and a half inch diameter. One is two and three quarter inch diameter. You can have them have whatever size you want. And for the larger circle, I have three fabrics here for three layers. You can have as many layers as you want. Now for my fabric, it's single sided. It's not like homespun fabric that's double sided. So my back layer, I don't want it to look unfinished on the back side. So when I layer these three together, this is what the back side would look like. So I actually went ahead and cut a four circle to finish off the back. I will glue it to the back. You'll see what I'm going to do, but it just makes it look nice and finished off. Now for the smaller circle, I do have homespun fabric here. I actually cut two, but you really only need one. And what I'm going to do is my three layers of fabric here. I'm just going to layer them together and then layer my two little fabric on top. And I'm layering them so they're just kind of off kilter a little bit. I don't want them necessarily neat. And then I've got some more crochet thread and a needle. And I'm just going to start from the back coming to the front. And I'm going to sew my little circle on in the front. Okay, if you're a gluer, you can go ahead and glue that circle on only about three quarters of the way around because you want to be able to stuff it and then you can close it with the glue. But I'm gonna go ahead and make my little stitches three quarters of the way around here. But before I come to the end of that, I'm going to use a little dowel on each of these sunflowers is what we're making. And I wanna make sure as I come and make my stitches that one of my stitches, I make sure there's enough space between the two stitches that my dowel's gonna fit. So my dowel's like the quarter inch dowel. So I'm just making sure I do one stitch and then when I come to pull up the stitch next to it, I leave enough space for that dowel to fit through it. 
Okay, and you'll probably understand that better as I show you here in a minute. But I'm making my stitches about three quarters of the way around here. If you're a gluer, you're going to glue, like I said, three quarters of the way around, leaving an opening. And then you're going to come in with some stuffing. And you're going to stuff that nice and tight in the center. And if you're a gluer, once you're done stuffing, you'll glue it closed. And then if you're a sewer, you're going to come up and finish with your stitches and sew that opening closed. When I come to the back side, I just kind of bring that thread through one of the other little stitches and tie a little knot and cut that off. And then here's where I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue and that piece that I'm covering the back with. Now, this is only if you want to finish the back off. And I'm adding glue to both pieces. And I'm going to lay that front of the flower onto the back. And then I'm going to spread it out nice and flat onto that back piece of fabric, you know, so it's nice and flat as it glues together. Now we're gonna work with our dowel for a minute. We wanna take our dowel and we wanna slide it between that area where you made the extra space to slide your dowel through all the way up. We're not gonna glue it in yet, okay? We're just gonna use this dowel for placement and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little petals in our sunflower. Nobody laugh at me. You know how I like to make things even. I am cutting mine probably about an inch apart so I cut a little piece of thread to lay in between each cut so that my petals are evenly spaced. I know! <laughs> You know how I am about measurements. Anyway, as you're cutting your petals, make sure that you don't cut all the way to the center. See how here I am leaving like probably a little quarter inch space between the cut and the petal. Okay, so you're going to continue this process all the way around. I'll let you watch me complete this process all the way around. And then once you're done, you know, I'm kind of crinkling and wrinkling the petals. I want to come in and distress them a little bit. I'm just taking some sandpaper here, and I am just taking that sandpaper and literally just sanding the flower. So you can see here on the right side how it's distressed, and on the left side it isn't. So you can decide if you want to sand your fabric or not. And I will split each of the layers and sand the fabric in between each of the layers as well. So I really kind of get that thready, distressed fabric look. Okay, again, this is whether you want to do this or not. You don't have to distress and have all those threads and stuff hanging off. I just wanted it to have a really rustic look. I'm even going to do it on the back side so the back side is all nice and finished off as well. Okay, now I also want to distress around the edges of that flower that I, you know, sewed on. And this is what it looks like when it's all complete. Okay, so now I want to make some leaves for my flower. This is just a piece of fabric, and it's about three inches tall and about four and a half inches wide. I've got some twine here, just about a 12-inch piece, and I'm going to squish the fabric in the center so it looks like a little bow tie. I'm going to take that twine around the back of that dowel, lay my fabric on top of the dowel, and then I'm going to Take the twine and wrap it around the dowel through the center of that fabric, tie it into a knot in the center so it looks like a little leaf, and I'm just going to let that twine hang. All right, before I glue everything on, I'm going to take some of that Distress Oxide ink in Vintage Photo, and I'm just going to kind of ink everything up, the leaf and the flower petals, center of the flower and everything. And then I'm going to go ahead, pull that dowel out, and now I want to glue it in. So I'm going to just add some Fabri-Tac glue on there, slide that dowel back in. I'm going to add some glue around the top of that dowel to slide my leaf and twine ensemble up against the flower. And now I've got a big button and I'm just taking some of that ink and just kind of distressing it up as well. And in some of this black wire you get from the automotive section in Dollar Tree, I'm going to take just a big long piece and thread it through the button. And I'm going to take the dowel of that flower and I'm going to just wrap the wire around it. So I curly cue the wire on both ends just to add a little something fun. Looks really cute like this. And then I'm going to take that button and I'm going to glue it in the center of that flower. Now I have already made the other one so when I'm done I've got five cute little distressed rustic sunflowers here. You can make as many as you want and I'm going to go ahead. I decided here I wasn't sure at first but as I put them all together I decided I want to kind of stain my dowels up a little bit so I'm just going to use that ink and just ink up the dowels. Now I've got this bucket left over. It's a Dollar Tree bucket left over from another project. I stuck a piece of gel foam in it and I'm just going to arrange these flowers in just a little, you know, five flower bouquet here. Really easy. Arrange how you like it. 
It would be cuter if it was fuller. Like I said, you can make as many flowers as you want. And then I'm just going to take some moss and I'm going to tuck it around the bottom of those flowers to cover up that gel foam. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number four. For this project, I'm bringing out another jar. This is from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take that lid off and I'm gonna use this one that I showed you in the first project. Remember, two pack from Dollar Tree. And then I've got a bunch of different florals here, a little pumpkin left over. And I've got some of these little LED lights. You could use these ones from Dollar Tree. Uh, and then I've got some raffia tied in a bow here. I've got some really cute velvet fall trim from Hobby Lobby and some orange checkered trim also from Hobby Lobby. Just kind of whatever you want. And a couple of rusty stars here. I wasn't sure at this point what size I wanted. And the first thing I want to do, I was just taking some green floral tape and attaching my pumpkin to one of the flower stems because the stem on the pumpkin was really short but later on you're I'll show you that I take that green floral off because you can see it and I just put some white floral tape on it and color it up a little bit so I put that new lid on the jar and I'm just threading my lights down into one of the little holes in the top of the jar kind of toward the back I'm using this battery pack or this light set because I like that the battery pack is a little bit smaller and then you just want to start adding your florals inside of that lid and again I love this lid kind of like the other one with the star on it because this lid with all the different little squares and it will hold all your floral in there see it's looking really cute kind of tucked in among the lights Here's my pumpkin retaped with white floral tape, and then I just ran some of that Distress Ink on it so it blends in a little bit better because you could kind of see it through the jar. And again, I'm just tucking in and arranging how I want it. This is so super easy, but looks really cute. And now I'm taking some of my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and some of that really pretty, you know, burnt orange velvet ribbon, and I'm just gluing it around the lid to kind of camouflage that. Decided to go with the smaller rusty star and a rusty safety pin. And I'm just going to pin it through the little orange checkered uh, ribbon that I tied into a bow. Why I didn't just pin all this together to the raffia, I don't know. Because my thought was I'm going to glue this raffia bow onto the front. And then my other little pinned ensemble, I'm going to glue to that. And then I decided, no, I'm going to pin it to the raffia. So add a little glue to the back as well as pin the checker bow to the raffia bow and then that makes this project complete. Let's move on to our last project, number five. For this project, you know there's going to be a pumpkin in here. I found this fabric at Hobby Lobby. I like it because it's almost like terry cloth, but it's really soft and flexible. And I made a pattern circle diameter 15 and a half inches, and I cut one circle out of that fabric. I am going to use some fishing line here. I know that I've showed this 
tons of times, but I always have new subscribers. So I like to use fishing line because after I stuff my pumpkin and I pull it tight to close it, it doesn't break. But you could use like crochet thread or twine or, you know, whatever you like to use best. I've taken the fishing line and I'm running it through that yarn darner needle just like it's thread and I'm knotting one end of it and I'm going to start on my fabric from the front to the back and I'm going to pull it all the way through till I reach the knot on that fishing line. Then I'm going to come back from the back to the front and I'm going to pleat it back and forth. I'm going to pleat that fabric back and forth on my needle. When I get as many on there as I want, I'm going to pull it all the way through and then I'm going to do it again, pleating it back and forth, fabric back and forth on my needle pulling it all the way through and I'm going to do this all the way around till I come back around to where I started. All right, so in this next one, you can see I made a loop here so you could see my knot in this light colored fabric. That's where I started. I'm going to pull that knot all the way out so I have a great big two long tails of fishing line here. And then I'm going to, as I'm holding onto that fishing line, I'm going to stuff my pumpkin and then I will close my pumpkin, you know, by pulling on those two long threads of the fishing line. And I'll just kind of keep doing that back and forth to figure out how tight I want it. And then I'm going to leave a hole big enough at the top for your stem. And then once I've got the hole as big as I want it, I'm going to go ahead and knot my fishing line. I usually do about five or six knots. And then I cut it off, leaving nice long tails and stuff that inside the pumpkin. Now I've got some thread or twine here. This came off one of the Dollar Tree pails. And I'm going to take the two ends together and find the center. And I'm going to take the center of that twine at the bottom of my pumpkin. I'm going to wrap it around to the top. I'm going to make a little half knot. And as I come out of that half knot, I'm going to pull that twine to the side where I don't already have twine. So it looks like a little plus sign there. Then I'm going to come to the bottom and I am going to pull the twine underneath the twine that's already there because that helps kind of hold it in place. And I'm going to fill in across here. So I want to make like six or seven sections. I'm going to pull that up to the top and then I'm going to tie a little knot. I'm going to pull the rope tight, tie a little knot, and then I'm going to cut off the excess. And now we have some sections on our pumpkin. And then this is a stem that came off of a Dollar Tree pumpkin. I'm going to cut off all those little pieces on the side and stuff at the top edge of that stem. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that stem using my Fabri-Tac glue into the hole at the top of my pumpkin there. And then I want to kind of cover up the stem. I'm going to use some thinner twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start out at probably about a half inch away from that stem. And I'm going to wind that twine around. Keep winding it in toward that stem. And then I'm going to wind that stem with the twine all the way up to the very top. And the reason I came out a little bit to the side is just to give it a little decorative touch. Once I get to the top, of course, I'll add a little glue at the end and I'll cut off the excess and just kind of cover that stem completely with that twine. And then we're just going to start decorating our pumpkin. I've got like, you know, stuff off of picks that leaves and pine cones and acorns and pit berries, a couple of uh, flowers and stuff. A lot of this came from Dollar Tree, some from Hobby Lobby, just little odds and ends, just a little bit of decor. I didn't want a lot. I've got a couple of bows here I made out of twine and out of some uh, twine trim here. I'm going to add both of those in the center, add a couple more little pieces here, and then I'm going to add some moss kind of to cover, you know, that center up. Add a couple of little sunflowers here. I'm going to take them, add a little glue, and then I've got a little black and cream checkered bow I've made out of some ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to take the two sunflowers and kind of put them together and then take that bow and center it right in between the two sunflowers. I'm just going to squish it all together. Add a little bit more moss here, just however you want to decorate it. And now I have a bed spring. I have quite a few of these in stock a friend gave to me. They're free and I'm just going to add some moss kind of hanging off the top edge of that bed spring and I'm going to glue that moss onto the top just kind of in spots in case I want to pull it off later and use this for something else. I don't know. And I'm just going to set that pumpkin right on top and that makes this project complete.
So I hope you enjoyed all of these five under five fall floral projects today for this DIY challenge. Again, reminding you, hosted by Missy, who is Crafty Cove DIY here on YouTube, and Emily, who is Farm Charm Chic here on YouTube. Again, I'll have a playlist link down below for you so you can go check out all the fall floral inspiration. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up because it really, really helps my channel to grow. And if you walked in here for the first time or maybe you're coming over from somebody else's channel, from Emily's or Missy's or whoever is participating in this challenge, their channel, welcome to my channel. If you're digging what you saw here today, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Now it's a little bit long, but I really think somebody needs to hear this. No matter what has happened in your life to cause you to make mistakes, you are not cast out, condemned, or forgotten. You have value, you have promise, you have worth. You are forgiven and loved. You shouldn't dwell on your past mistakes or listen to people who point a finger at you with reminders of what you did in the past. If Jesus can cast out all your mistakes and forget them, so should you. You mustn't let the enemy continually have a front row seat to your life with a blinking sign as a constant reminder, a beacon telling you about your one mistake. You are better than this. You are strong, determined, powerful, because God made you this way. You need to let go of the past, allow forgiveness to settle in, and let Jesus grow you into his mighty oak. Allow him to use you for greatness in his kingdom. Don't dwell on past circumstances that keep you in a never-ending cycle of negative self-evaluation. Allow Jesus to use you to stand tall in the desires of your heart that he has given you, no matter how small you may feel at this moment. Let that feeling go and strive to move forward with the help of Jesus to turn this negativity into a positive world of all he has for you. Just because you experience the setback doesn't mean God isn't willing to take you down a new path. It doesn't mean that he can't use that instance to shape your future to do great things in his name. You must make a conscious decision right now to accept forgiveness, rise up, and stand on the solid foundation of his truth, his mercy, and his grace. Allow God to make your path straight, and that will lead you to his highest mountaintop. Allow him to guide your every footstep into a place of healing. Place your trust in him. Now, it may take some time to fully grasp the concept of finally just let go and let God, but you must allow this healing that he has for you to take place and let his forgiveness strip away these things in your heart. Stop dwelling on the past mistake. Move forward with his grace and love. Realize that God will determine your future as you leave behind those past feelings of regret. He will use that mistake to make you victorious today. He will not give up on you. He will not leave you behind. Allow his light to permeate that darkness in your mind and change your life into what he formed you with, courage and purpose. You are whole, you are beautiful, and you are full of his grace. He wants you to rise up and be confident in his love for you at this very moment. Don't be ashamed of the past because you are forgiven in the present and you must trust in him for your future. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.